It's over. It's over. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's over. Is it really? Let me ask y'all a couple of questions. I'm going to run the clip because the whole entire stream is like eight hours long. And we're getting ready to go ahead and head into court. Did the defense say, hey, we're going to prove that the drive-by happened? No. Did the defense say, hey, we're disproving that a drive-by happened? No. So the defense, meaning Melly's people, never try to cooperate the story of who? The drive-by. That was Borland. Borland came up with that. With that being said, let's do it another way. Did you still prove what you needed to prove? I didn't see where it looked like any of that was proven. It looks horrible for Bortley. You brought in the bodies. You gave the story. No YNW Melly in sight. So that's the one thing that I point out and go. Now. Does it look bad from the outside looking in? Of course. But all they did was just disprove the theory of a drive-by and say that this had to happen in the car. All right, cool. Now, one thing that cannot be denied and be played over is this imagery of the drive-by happening and all this stuff and everything like that. And then basically, Melly or whomever would have been sitting in the back seat firing a shot now that's the one thing where it's like bruh if Bortland was driving and the other two people in there what are you left with it's essentially this and i learned this from sherlock holmes when everything has been disproven what remains so that's the tactic that i see them taking out i get all this stuff and everything about trying to make him out to be a bad guy that's the gang member stuff i get the stuff trying to get him to basically Look like, hey, bro, this might have been premeditated. I get all that part. And that he actually confessed somewhere down the line. That part I get. Now we're getting to the meat and potatoes. Hey, bro, that drive-by didn't happen. Then if you weren't in the car, you were in the middle of the sea, the middle of the water, the middle of the lake. Where, where was you? So that was the cell phone tower stuff. The cell phone tower stuff gives the two versions. Either he was in that car or he was out in the water in the middle of nowhere. And what was you doing? More than likely burying that strap. So that's what they're going to try to lay out. Is it looking bad for Melly? It don't look good, but it don't look bad in my opinion. But we will see. There's still a lot more court to get to. I think it's going to last probably about two more weeks. And then that's going to be that. And we'll find out. But right now, can you definitively say that Melly was the shooter? Y'all let me know y'all thoughts. I'm going to go ahead and run this nine-minute clip. Check this out. This resting angle in this seat. You have the projectile coming in, exiting through the top of the, the skull, and then continuing through the windshield. You said windshield. Or, I'm mean, sorry, the window. Can you say that it was at the top of the window or the bottom of the window, the middle of the window? I cannot. So, based on that projectile and the blowback, you can make what opinions? So, based on the the angle of this uh, this projectile, the blowback is indicative of a firearm being in close vicinity of the head. The head is something that bleeds profusely when it's, when it's pierced. Um, if you've ever fallen on, in, on stairs or hit your head, it bleeds like no tomorrow. And because the projectile entered in uh, right below the skull, it, the blowback ended up coming in the direction of, as I was speaking earlier about the hose, in the direction that it came from. And you will get that with a close, uh, with a very close shot. That blowback then proceeded after the shot, it went up. It hit this 
headliner and continued and falling into the back seat. And so I want to go to some of the other photos. There's a yellow foot jacket that's under the very back of the vehicle. Is it important to know whose DNA and blood was found on that? What yellow jacket? Let me come back to that because I have the other photos, so we'll come back okay. to that in a moment. Okay, so in terms of the location of the firearm that fired the shot, and we were just talking about in CSW 6745, does this attempt to accurately recreate the potential location of that firearm? So the purpose of this photograph is strictly demonstrative to show where once the projectile enters into the head, you're gonna have the blowback, which again will come up, strike the headliner, and then continue. It's actually continuing this way and landing back here behind the driver in this area of the vehicle. In terms of the driver and the t-shirt that he was wearing, do you take into account the location of the victim's DNA on his shirt? Well, based upon the, the blowback pattern up here, I would expect to find some blowback here if, uh, on a driver, if a driver was there. Okay, Sergeant, you can answer that question. Why don't you restate the question, yes. So you were discussing that how you would find and determine angles and ranges for specific individuals that are presented to you. Yes. How would you do that? So I would obtain a shooting height, a, a maximum, what we would determine as a maximum shooting height, which would be standing with your arm out at 90 degrees. That height would be obtained from the ground to your arm, to, to your finger essentially and then a minimum shooting height, which would be squatting with the same arm out and uh, measurement from here to your finger. And then those, that would give me a minimum and a maximum range of fire. Once I have a minimum and maximum range of fire, that gets added into more trig to determine a minimum and maximum distance of that particular shooter. So with regards to this incident, were you there on scene? No. Do you know who fired the shots? No. In terms of the shots to the outside of the vehicle, are you aware that individuals are already dead when those are fired? They were already dead, yes. Action, so, yeah. How does that play into your reconstruction? There, well, the, it comes into play because specifically with Christopher Thomas, because Christopher Thomas was already deceased when these rounds were coming into the back of the vehicle because Christopher Thomas was what we would call crumbling. He was starting to fall, if you will. And on top of that, I know that he was already deceased because the back of his, his back essentially, the rounds that are in his back have no blood in them, which means that there's no circulation. So, I, so the rounds are coming in, Christopher Thomas is crumbling with each round, he's falling with each round, and that's, uh, that's, would, that's the answer. Okay. So in terms of, we'll get to the shooting inside the car in a little bit. I want to stick to the outside at this point. When you were looking at the side of the car on the angles of entry and the side to side angles that I'm talking about, why is that important in your analysis? I'm going to go back to 4809 to describe those angles. So these angles are important because it is uh, part of my assignment, which is to determine if this is a drive-by shooting. And 
my determination was that this is not a drive-by shooting, and it's based upon this picture here, which is a very good picture to describe it. All of these rounds are done, um, and all, uh, all but one is done at, an, um, at a stationary position. The shooter is at a stationary position when all, when all but one of these rounds are going in. The one round that that uh, has some movement in it, which is round uh, site L here, the uh, the shooter is actually moving in that to create the uh, the little bit of a keyhole that you see there. Okay, yeah. a lot of information in that answer, so let's break it down a little bit. You mentioned a keyhole, so I'm going to zoom in on site L and explain what is a keyhole. So a keyhole is a projectile comes out of the barrel and it is actually spinning in a, in a line. It's also falling as it spins. However, once you add movement to the gun, at the same time the projectile is coming out, you introduce that movement to the projectile. Once the projectile has altered movement, it will start to tumble. So it's no longer going in a straight line. It is actually going like uh, head over feet, if you will, as it's entering into its target. And that head over feet gives you this right here, which is essentially the projectile coming in sideways. And in terms of a drive-by shooting, if two vehicles are moving at 45 miles per hour, what would you expect to see? So if it's a drive-by shooting, all of these rounds should look like this. Why? Because movement has been is being introduced to that projectile. So to contrast site mm -hmm. L, with one of the other sites, like you, what does that tell you? So that's a, that's a shot that the shooter is stationary. The vehicle is stationary. 